strategies. Great, breathing strategies. Um, let me just check in with uh, one of my students here. Okay, so breathing strategies, great. So we've spent the last half hour talking about how to prepare the body for singing. And as a continuation and natural outgrowth of that, we need to figure out how to get and how to hold a good breath, All right? So obviously for singing, it's, bad for the shoulders to go up. And this is why we spent, you know, a good portion of the last half hour talking about relaxing the shoulders, feeling weight in the elbows, right? Still, and I'm gonna, not gonna lie to you, you know, I see videos of myself on YouTube or whatever, uh, singing opera or concert. And when I get tired or I get nervous, sometimes the good technique goes, <laughs> right? And we always try like a good baseball batter to up that batting percentage of nailing everything, but nobody sings at a thousand percent, right? Uh, we want to try and get as close to that as possible, but we're human beings. So sometimes I will, you know, do a high breath. I wish I could say 100,000, 100% of the time that didn't happen, but it does, even to people who are really accomplished and been doing this. However, that doesn't mean we can't have the ideal. So these breathing strategies, most of them I got working with a tuba player. I spent the first part of my young professional life being a brass player as a trumpet player. And that is all about high speed, muscular transfer of air. Singing is a little different. Now I benefited from having that experience with the diaphragm, uh, you know, blowing it out at a ferocious velocity. But if you do that with singing, you can oftentimes overblow your instrument. You don't want that. And then you actually spread your chords out apart. You don't want that either. Um, but you still want all the strength associated with being able to do that. It just the whole thing about singing is there's a combination of how much air comes out and what, what speed goes out. That means that taking the breath in is what's ultimately challenging and important because we sing in choir and in choir, it's all about, you know, Alleluia, Alleluia. Most of our time is spent dispensing the air, not taking the air in. So it's an imbalance that we naturally normally are going to have. We're really good at dispensing the air, but taking in the air, maybe not so. So I like uh, to be equitable in that treatment. So the best breathing exercise I do, I look at my watch, which in my case has a second hand and the second hand will always give you quarter note or beat equals 60, obviously, right? 60 seconds in the minute. So if the second hand is tick, 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 and a metronome will work good for this too, tick, 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 tick. I start the exercise. You guys can do this along with me. I'm going to talk my way through it a few times. And when you feel like it, you can just join in. So what I do is I rest for four, then I take in for four. And when I take in, I say the word how, like in reverse, I go. Then I hold for four. Now let me stop there. When I hold for four, it's not like an underwater breath where you're putting pressure on your cords. It's just open mouth and relax here and here. All right. So um, that's what that is. After I hold for four, then I go <sighs> as much air is out and as much air back in as possible. That way we are generating that part of the exercise by doing what's overlooked, which is the air going out. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, that's not right. What's overlooked is the air coming in. But in, other, in order to capitalize on wanting to improve the air coming in, we have to make sure that it's completely empty so that we have more to fill up, right? So like an inverse um, um, you know, resistance exercise. So you get more benefit from if there's nothing there already, if that makes any sense, right? And then I go out on four. So I'm gonna talk my way through it. It's rest. Two, three, four. Sorry, messed up. Let's try it again. Um, 
it's hard to explain and do it at the same time. So it's rest, two, three, four, in on how, two, three, four, hold with a relaxed, two, three, four, out into ooh three e four or out two three four. And then rest. So let's take a break for a minute. So the one of the most important parts is that hold is not where you have tension here, here, or here, or here. It's just I keep the mouth open, and then I re re uh, go into the inverse pan, right? So while we're doing this now, does anybody have any questions on that? If you do this every day for like a week in choir, you're just going to have bigger, bolder phrases that can go longer you're not gonna have to take those catch breaths that you might normally have to take and what i do is after a couple of days then i up everything to five so it's like <sighs> but i always do at least three days of whatever number I happen to be on. And I've seen brass players get intense with this, like up to like 22 beats. They're like literally taking it in in breath for like controlled 22 beats. That is incredibly sophisticated sort of control over your breathing. I tend to oftentimes think of singing as like a wind instrument um, and not so separate from what the winds and the brass do. Um, maybe it's because of my own history having been a trumpeter and all that. I don't know, but I do know that that exercise right there really helps. So I want to move on to a couple of other breathing techniques, unless there are any questions. If you have any questions, unmute yourself because I can't see some of you. But if you have any questions about this, let me know. We can talk about that. It's pretty clear. But if for some reason uh, something doesn't make sense, please talk about it now. And then, or otherwise, we'll move on. OK? So that, I call that measured breathing. Um, the next thing about breathing that I want to talk about is we inquire you know, a lot about diaphragmatic breathing. We, most of us have heard that a lot, and that's really important. However, we don't breathe with, with the diaphragm. What happens is the diaphragm will go down and kind of forward-ish, making more room for the lower part of the lungs to fill up. We can only breathe with, breathe with the lungs unless you're a freak of nature. Um, and uh, so we don't breathe with the diaphragm. The diaphragm gets out of the way to make room for the lungs, the lower part of the lungs, right? Um, lower is always better. So breathing 1.0 is kind of like this will go, and then we breathe here. Uh, and that's coming sort of from the strength of that, right? The diaphragm can get out of the way in more ways than that. If we were to temporarily isolate this and not have this available, it would find space here for the lungs to go in the back. And the way that I do that is I bend down like this, keep my arms, I think there's like a rope on my middle finger, tugging it down. And I'll breathe in again on the word how. And I put my hands here, I go, and I'll feel that. So if I want to go, ah, uh, without that bending breath, I'll go here. Ah, uh, pretty good. But if I want more, I'll do it this way. So I breathe, then I tilt up and sing. So, and that's going in like that on the octave. Because I have the breath reserve there. Now, my students, if they want to kill me, they'll be working on a song and ready to go and want to sing through it. And I'll have them isolate every breath. So it'll be like, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear whoever's birthday it is. 
happy birthday to you, right? So every time in the beginning, they have to isolate the phrases and they feel like they can't artistically get through it, but that's okay because they're learning a technique. After three or four weeks, suddenly this is starting to expand on its own without having to bend down, then they can add it to what's going on here. So if you're in a space where you can try this, just on just uh, go bend it, bending breath down there, hold the breath, then ah, uh, and access these parts of the back, that side and that side. Ah, uh, just give it a shot. I'll give you a minute to do that. So if anybody wants to comment on how that felt, did it feel like it didn't work? Did it feel like maybe you had more in reserve? Was it cool? Was it just so strange? I mean, when I learned how to do that, I felt freedom. Like I had even more breath and I suddenly could sing longer phrases, right? So that's how I felt. Um, good. So the next aspect is similar. This thing we call a podja technique is using this part of the ribs to kind of expand out that way. And the way that you learn that is this, bending down like this, I go breathe in and then I stand up and sing it again. And I'm thinking of energy going that way. So it's like this, <gasps> oh, like that. So it's going out that way. And I do that a couple of times. Oh, sorry. <gasps> oh, right. And likewise, the same way on the other side, you have to do both sides separately. Uh, right, so that's a podja technique. Then I combine the two. So I'll go over and forward. So I'm getting this and the back. And I go, oh, uh, that's really powerful. And I do the other side like that too, right? So that's learning how to think of more of your breathing apparatus, not just forward, but all the way around. So you have front point, back point, and side points all working together. That you'll get like three times as much breath, right? So I'll be able to go like, like if I do that. taking those other breaths right good so that those are my basic sort of building block blocks of breath support do we have any questions Does anything not make sense there anybody please pipe in and this is the kind of work that i do with my students on a one-on-one -on -one basis i'm happy to work with anybody in this room teacher and or student and I see myself as kind of just a student just probably a lot older than anybody else in the room but I'm still a student myself so I'm constantly looking for new ways to um you know uh expand my own knowledge or skill set uh so that eventually it gets to the students that's the only thing that's important it's not important sort of who gets the who how you get the information if it's good information I don't care I just want it and sometimes it comes from students, sometimes it comes from fellow teachers. Occasionally, I'll come up with a good idea that works. Um, you know, so there's that. Okay, so I'm going to open the floor again for more questions. And if not, then I'm going to take about five minutes. And